This is five on your side at six, focused on you. Off the top at six, frustrations for families in North County as they say they haven't received mail in days, in some cases weeks. The concerns are coming out of Ferguson and five on your side is getting answers. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. After neighbors contacted us about their delayed mail, we sent our Travis Cummings on the case. It's her weekly trip to the post office. I have a consignment business. So I deliver every Saturday and ship it out. Ferguson resident and businesswoman Rita Moore says the other end of that shipping hasn't all been smooth lately. I've received um, phone calls and some emails um, inquiring about my customers. They're inquiring about their packages that they haven't received it. And it may have been two weeks ago. Um, I can look up their tracking number and I can see that it says delayed shipping. There's also mail problems for her personally from time to time. I get um, informed emails about what I'm going to get in the mail that day and sometimes I don't get it. It's something many in the area have dealt with, some without mail for months and weeks waiting on important documents or packages to roll through. With so many people opening up their mailboxes to find them empty, we reached out to the United States Postal Service to see what might be causing these issues. Meanwhile, a service alert they put out on Friday says multiple severe weather events are impacting the processing, transportation and delivery of mail and packages across the U.S. They requested that residents allow additional time for delivery. Moore wants more normalcy for her and her customers. We need our mail. We gotta pay bills. We need to know what's going on. <laughs> Travis Cummings, five on your side. Now the Postal Service sent us a statement apologizing for the inconvenience that families are facing. They say, quote, we're delivering as much mail as we can as safely as possible. The Postal Service is asking for patience as it works to fix the issues. More problems for St. Louis Bar weeks after a police car crashed into it. Bar PM had serious damage and police arrested a co-owner after an altercation with an officer. The bar owner and his partner are just tenants of that building. The building owners got a letter from the city threatening to condemn the building if repairs are not made by February 19th. Those who know the bar owners are frustrated with that. I'm just, I'm really disappointed in what the city, the city's lackluster approach to help mitigate and resolve the situation. It seems they're more interested in the lawsuits and the, the charges against Chad and James than helping correct the problem that they, they caused. We are hearing from the city and Annie Crawl catches up with the owners of the building. Look for that new report tonight at 10. Police recovered an unloaded gun inside of a school in East St. Louis. School officials say Mason Clark Middle School had to go on lockdown yesterday. Well, they eventually were able to dismiss the school on time without any issues. No one was hurt. A juvenile male is in custody. The mother of a missing woman is speaking out. Michaela Wickerson went missing months ago along with her three-year-old daughter. Authorities believe their disappearance is connected to a cult in Berkeley, Missouri. Michaela's mom says she was worried about her daughter's mental health even before she disappeared. Actually, now that I look back, uh, she was distancing herself before not answering my phone calls. Um, she was saying that she was going on a spiritual journey. She was vulnerable and they took advantage of it. Six people are missing in connection with the cult. All of them were last seen at a Quality Inn in Florissant last August. Anyone with information should contact Berkeley Police at 314-524-3311. Congresswoman Cori Bush seeking re-election. The Democrat from Missouri launching her campaign this morning. Cori Bush has faced some scrutiny in the last few months for her response to the war in Israel. Her stance on that conflict appeared to be a key part of her campaign launch today as she sported a St. Louis for ceasefire shirt. This is not about anti-Semitism. This is not about whether I hate Jewish people or not, because I absolutely don't. What it is about is white supremacy. 
it is about one group being greater than another group. And we tear that down no matter where we see it. Well, St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell is challenging Bush in the primary. Our Mark Maxwell will have more on that race tonight at 10. Today, St. Louis Public Schools launched a new program and it's called Literacy for the Loo. The goal is to not only improve literacy, but to also get kids excited about reading. Today, our Mercedes McKay takes us to the downtown library. Anyone can have a book. Stereotyped as a quiet spot, St. Louis Public Library's downtown branch was anything but that Saturday. All thanks to a citywide effort in full swing. It's going to be the largest reading initiative in the history of the city of St. Louis, as far as we're concerned. Known as Literacy for the Loo, the program launched by St. Louis Public Schools is an all-encompassing effort to increase and improve literacy among St. Louis's children. A big part of getting kids reading is giving them books that they want to read, books that are identifiable, books that have characters that look like them, that are culturally relevant to them. But it wasn't just thousands of books that were handed out. The district wanted to make sure families were sent home with tools to encourage reading, even when they're not in the classroom. Resources for families to know how to teach a little bit, to help those kids really get some mileage out of that time that they're spending reading and help them become better readers. Through this initiative, their dream is to change kids' view on reading as a whole, hoping the turn of each page brings a smile to St. Louis children's faces. It's not supposed to be a chore. It's not supposed to be something they've got to do. We want it to be something they love to do. And to do that, they have to have books available to them, and they have to have books available to them that they're interested in, that they want to read. With that shift in momentum, the district believes literacy for the Lou will be the start of something new. We'll look back on in 20 years and say this was a starting step to really grow reading grow the schools and grow the city of St. Louis because literacy and success of our population and success of our city are all tied together. In St. Louis, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. And the district hopes today will build momentum for the future of literacy in our community.